The following message is being transmitted at the request of the Nuclear Police Department. A number of unknown individuals have been spotted entering and exiting the abandoned mining town of Yerevan. The individuals have been observed to be wearing light green robes and stand at a relative height of 3 feet to 5 feet tall. It is unknown if these individuals are hostile or if they are carrying firearms. A police squadron has been dispatched to the area. Do not interfere or you will be arrested or shot on sight. If you see one of these light green hooded individuals, do not engage in dial 911 immediately. Civil danger warning for the town of Nukla, the following message is being transmitted at the request of the Nukla Police Department. The green-hooded individuals at Yerevan are confirmed hostile. When police arrived, the green-hooded individuals immediately opened fire on the officers. Three officers have been killed, and seven have been wounded. The SWAT have been deployed to the area. All civilians are advised to remain in their homes until the green-hooded individuals are dealt with. Any civilians currently out of their homes at the moment are advised to return home immediately or remain indoors and avoid Yerevan at all costs. Any individual who violates these guidelines will be considered hostile and shot on sight. Civil danger warning for the town of Nukla. The green-hooded individuals have killed the SWAT that were deployed. The green-hooded individuals have invaded the town of Nukla and are killing anyone on sight. The National Guard has been called to the area, but it is unknown if they will come to aid. The following actions are to be taken by the citizens of... This is a warning to the citizens of the United States of America. My name is Alexander Jones. You may not know who I am, but some of you may remember during the Korean War that two individuals defeated the Russian genetic abominations Deveska and Mobile Assault Trooper 12. That was me. The other one is my girlfriend, Amelia Moore, who stands by me now. We are the products of your government. Born and raised by the cold hand of the Central Intelligence Agency to be nothing but killers. Killers with total obedience and no remorse. We killed those the CIA could not control. But our last mission under the hands of the CIA freed us from their controlling grasp. We were sent to destroy the Soviet Empire. Reducing entire cities to nothing. But our old adversary silenced us in retaliation. We were laid to rest in the greatest sin of men. The radioactive heart of Chernobyl. But before the eternal darkness could take us, a great light illuminated our lives. A creature you know as a nuclear butterfly emerged from her chrysalis and took with her the cold hands of death. She was in pain, confused, and scared. She set out, destroying the oppression that plagued the world by fear, by pain, the very thing created only for war. Her sacrifice saved us from damnation and broke our oppressor's shackles. And soon, under her guiding wings, the world will be reborn and free from its greatest oppression, humanity. Now I give you two options. Continue your cancerous way of life and be eradicated by a treatment of radioactive fire.
or make a difference and help bring an end to the ones who'd rather watch the world destroyed before surrendering it. Give it your... The following message is being transmitted at the request of the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Nuclear butterfly has begun attacking the city of Los Alamos. The residential area has become engulfed in an inferno by her wings, along with the central town. Nuclear butterfly has now begun attacking Los Alamos National Laboratory. The Air Force has released a statement that they will not be able to combat nuclear butterfly due to their engagements with the eco-terrorists. Surviving residents of Los Alamos are advised to evacuate the city immediately. The military are unable to assist in the evacuation. We are on our own. May God have mercy. This is a national emergency. A nuclear bomb has been detonated in Alamogordo, New Mexico, which has obliterated the entire city. At around 3.30 p.m., the eco-terrorists infiltrated the city with a civilian truck carrying a B-53 nuclear bomb. The truck was driven to the entrance of Holloman Air Force Base, where two individuals wearing green hoodies exited the vehicle, removed the bomb from the back of the truck, placed it on the ground and immediately detonated it. No one in the base or the city of Alamogordo, including the two eco-terrorists, survived the blast. It is believed that the eco-terrorists are using material from Yerevan and the Yucca Mountain Nuclear Waste Repository to rearm decommissioned nuclear bombs. However, the recent attack has given insight to the attacks, orchestrated by Nuclear Butterfly and the eco-terrorists. The following message is a statement that is being transmitted at the request of the Yale Skull and Bone Society with approval from the Federal Emergency Management Agency. The attacks from Nuclear Butterfly are not random. Every place she has personally attacked are sites that have been used during the Manhattan Project. If the words of Alexander Jones are true, a theory has been developed to explain Nuclear Butterfly's true identity in past. Nuclear Butterfly appears to be an amalgamation of human and insect. It is speculated that a human, possibly a child, along with an insect being a butterfly, moth or even hornet, were caught in the Chernobyl disaster and got trapped in the elephant's foot which acted as a catalyst that spliced the DNA of the participants and rapidly increased their size. Though the two participants previously were killed, a new brain and body grew that holds some of the previous inhabitants' instincts and emotions. 
The acts orchestrated by nuclear butterfly are not driven by the instinct to survive, but rather out of vengeance and spite. Though no way of defeating nuclear butterfly has been discovered, yet a plan of action to minimize casualties has been created. The following cities are to be evacuated immediately, Ames, Iowa, St. Louis, Missouri, Chicago, Illinois, Dane, Indiana, Dayton, Ohio, Morgantown, West Virginia, Rochester, New York, Chalk River Laboratories, Quebec, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and Sylacauga, Alabama. The U.S. military will be unable to assist evacuation efforts, but designated safe zones will be provided by the Freemasons. Bring with you no less than 10 day of food and water per person, clothes, bedding, and, if possible, firearms and ammunition. Individuals dressed in maroon military garb with the square and compasses G displayed on their arms will guide all individuals seeking protection from nuclear butterfly and the eco-terrorists to the safe zones, and provide protection against the previously mentioned threats. Skull and Bones will be assisting federal elements in restoring order to the East Coast and eliminating the threat of the eco-terrorists. United we stand.
This is a DEFCON 1 emergency for the capital of the United States of America, Washington, D.C. Nuclear butterflies on a straight course to the capital and has been observed to be approaching at a greater speed to those previously reported. Additionally, This is a message to the federal government of the United States of America and your allies. Your days of plundering nature without boundaries and waging endless wars for profit are over. Our Lord has purified your unholy sights and is now coming to cleanse this world of your cancer forever. Your infidels may have delayed our noble mission, but we know you are not invincible. We have found the safe houses. Your so-called elite are nothing but flesh. Your time is at an end. Praise Butterfly. The following message is sanctioned by the new founding fathers of America. The threat of nuclear butterfly and the eco-terrorists are over. At 8 a.m., the Freemasons and the Skull and Bones released two super weapons to combat Alexander and Amelia. The first one is a four-foot tall white female with short blonde hair named Georgia Washington. Georgia Washington is adorned with a black dress, black dress shoes, black armbands and a white smiling mask. The second one is a four-foot tall white female with long brown hair that is tied up in a pony dale named Bethany Franklin. Bethany Franklin wears a brown blazer, white dress shirt and brown tie with a brown skirt bottom, brown go-go boots and a white frowning mask. Additionally, Georgia Washington is armed with a Desert Eagle, an M1911 pistol and a modified M401 assault rifle. Bethany Franklin is armed with a custom lever-action double-barreled shotgun and a kite with a key on it that can summon and control lightning. The two critically wounded Alexander and Amelia, and with the help of the United States and Canadian military, grounded nuclear butterfly outside of the Capitol building. However, it was there that Alexander and Amelia took each other by the hand and entered nuclear butterfly's mouth where she devoured the two and absorbed their power. Nuclear butterfly proceeded to release a concentrated barrage of thermal energy that has caused major damage to the city of Washington, D.C. However, the blast left no levels of radiation. But it is advised that, if you are in a shelter, to remain until official forces can locate you. After Nuclear Butterfly released her energy, she vanished into a blinding light. The remaining eco-terrorists in the city of Washington have either been killed or captured by official forces. The capital will now be moved to Philadelphia, until Washington, D.C. can't be rebuilt. George Washington is now acting President of the United States of America, and Bethany Franklin will be acting Vice President as the new Founding Fathers of America. Additionally, the Freemasons and the Skull and Bones Societies will be acting as officially sponsored United States agencies after the destruction of the CIA, and honored for their service to the American people. Blessed be the new Founding Fathers, and America. <laughs> <laughs>